Hi everyone. Happy Tuesday or Monday or whatever day it is that you're watching. For me, it's Tuesday. I don't keep track of days or whatever. I'm still in my third month. Um, it's right before November's ending. That's all I know timestamp wise. Um, but what I wanted to briefly talk about and briefly because I have to get to work um, today is um, depression and self-love and snapping yourself out of places that are not serving you. Um, I have <laughs> my full-on makeup today, and I have my matchy-matchy scarf, which I didn't even intentionally, like the scarf is old, and the jacket I bought new from uh, Stitch Fix because I needed a bigger jacket to fit the foobs, um, and I conveniently had this like propped up on my steering wheel, and now it's not really working that way. Anyway, eventually I will get to a point where I can hold my phone in flattering, um, <laughs> in flattering angles to take really good vlogs where it doesn't look like I have 25 double chins. Um, but I haven't vlogged in a while. Um, and a big part of that is because I have been really down. Um, really down. Like, not Jen, <laughs> not myself, down. Um, with the holidays rolling around, for some people that's a joyous time, and for some people it's an anxious time, and whatever. Um, for me as a divorced mom, it's always a weird time on the holidays that I don't have my kids with me. Um, and uh, yeah, it just kind of sucks. You know, I, I get it's fair to, <laughs> to share holidays, but it's hard when you go through a holiday and you don't have your children to, you know, to spend that time with. So that, and like my birthday is next week, I'm turning 50. I'm not even so sad about turning 50. Um, it was funny because I got, I got a letter from AARP, which in itself, like I know people laugh about that, but the funny thing, it, it was addressed to me. It was addressed to me with my former last name when I was married. And I've been divorced for, oh gosh, uh, six, seven years. It's been quite some time. So I'm like, well, she gets to join AARP, but apparently I still have some time. <laughs> um, anyhow, so I've I've been in a really down place. Um, I've been really not empowered with any of this. I feel like um, my body is just not my own. Um, it's uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm like at the effect of whatever's happening around me. And like, I have no control over anything. So like, why bother trying stuff? I was in my pajamas for like two days over the weekend, um, doing puzzles. Like I don't do puzzles. I don't know. It's just, just not me. Like not wanting to get up and do stuff. It's the pandemic. So like, you know, you're afraid about being around other people. Um, though things are getting better and, and, um, it was nice. I did spend Thanksgiving with a friend of mine and her family, and it was nice to spend time around them, like, when people are vaccinated and you feel safe and it feels relatively normal. Um, and I'm grateful that friends asked me to come to their, you know, join their families for Thanksgiving. I have not been expressing a lot of gratitude lately. I, <laughs> I seem to go in, in spurts of that. Um, but the, the third part of all of this is the self-love and the self-caring. Last week, um, I had an appointment with the therapist from the cancer center and, um, he is breaking up with me. <laughs> he thinks I'm doing fine and that I don't need him anymore because I know all the right things to do. And I said, I know all the right things to do, even when I'm down. It's just like, I don't always do them. You know, I know I should get up and go do A, B, and C, but I don't. Um, I mean, I'll admit there are days where I can go like, or times where I can go like four days and I'm just like in pandemic mode in my apartment. There's no one there. You know, I, it's like, what's the point of getting up and getting dressed? I'll just put my hair in a stupid scrunchie for four days. Um, whatever. I think sometimes having time off from work does not always work out to your advantage. Um, and just filling it with other stuff. And then right now with the pandemic, it's limited to what you can do. And a lot of people that I know are still leery about going out and doing things that are social. Um, and then I have the people that just like disappeared. Um, a lot of my like, let's go hang out friends I haven't heard from since I got my diagnosis. So it's been a really weird sense of um, I'm not me. 
I I don't think I'm clinically depressed because obviously my psychiatrist thinks that I'm sane and fine. It's just that I was in a moment and I'm obviously not in it now, which is why I wanted a vlog to share. Um, I joined TikTok. I don't use my name, so don't get too excited and I have no videos posted. But I, uh, I've been watching Saturday Night Live a lot. And yes, I was intrigued about Pete Davidson dating Kim Kardashian. So I, some th video came across about Pete Davidson and I started following his things. And he is very open about, I mean, A, he's a riot, but he's very open about his depression. He, um, like what he goes through and, and his talks of when he was suicidal and but he would actually never do anything because of his family and whatever he's just very open and very real about that kind of stuff um and that you know he's been in rehab he's he's had supports to give him his toolbox of what to do and what he said <laughs> my 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 down period was flipped by pete davidson if you're watching <laughs> um yeah, it was flipped because of that, because he's like, you know, I know I have my bag of tricks or whatever he said to do. Like, you know, you take a cold shower or, you know, the reason why he has so many tattoos on him is because he um, he would cut and he d had tattoos all over his chest in order to cover up the star scars, I guess, from where he was cutting himself. Um, but he's just very open about all of it and has has seeked out help, which is the most important part. Um, you know, I am, I consistently have been talking to the social worker and the therapist in the cancer center because, you know, the cancer throws a whole monkey wrench into, into the holiday, you know, depressive period. Um, but I do have a very, very large bag of tricks. I, I work with other people and kids and teach them about bags of tricks of things to do to get them out of bad places. But as many of you know, it's really hard sometimes to follow your own advice. I could tell somebody else all the grandiose sort of things that they should do. And then there I am, like, eating three dark chocolate-covered pretzels, watching, like, stupid-ass shows on TV, and I don't even really like watching TV. It's just not me. Um, and I know I can't stay there. And what gets hard about the winter time too, is, like, before, I was going out walking all the time. And that was one thing that Pete Davidson said. He's like, you know, he'll go, I don't know if he said hit the gym, whatever. But I remember him listing a couple of things that he does to get him out of his, um, like, you know, get him back into being himself. Um, so I was thinking about that for me. And like, yeah, I'd love to do Zumba. That'd be awesome if I could do Zumba. Because that would totally make me laugh and be happy. But I can't bounce around right now. So that's not on my list and not in my bag of tricks for right now. But I can go walking. The problem now is that it's so freaking ass cold outside because I'm, you know, in the Northeast that I don't want to go walking when it's 20 degrees out. For a certain time, my hot flashes were like lining up pretty well with my morning walks. Not so much anymore. My hot flashes now have, um, oh, that's interesting. Just realize that. My hot flashes now don't really happen first thing in the morning. They happen overnight. And I'm just realizing that I changed the timing of my tamoxifen now that I'm back at work. I take it earlier in the day because I have it right after breakfast. And I'm up a lot at night because I'm sweating so bad. Um, and I'm just hot. So I wonder if I should tweak that somehow. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll f find out. Um... Anyway, so yes, throughout cancer, you know, if, if you're going through this or just in general with the holidays, whatever, there are times where it's really easy to fall into a depressive state. The thing is not to stay there. And I know it's not me. I feel like I've not been me for a while. And what's so frustrating is before all this drama happened, like back in like 2018, <laughs> early 2019, it's like I was traveling a lot. I was doing all these like bucket list kind of things and just like having a blast. And I was like, yay, I'm fun, Jen again. And then the pandemic hits and it's like, no, Jen, you can't socialize. And that's really hard for me because I'm a people person very much so. Um, it was just a combination of things put together. And then, you know, when the cancer thing happened, I, I almost felt a weird relief. That sounds so wrong, but I felt a relief because I'm like, oh, OK, so that's what's been going on all this time. Fix it, you know, fix it and like, let's move on. 
And now like, yes, they're fixed. Um, yes, right now I feel like I am ready to feed a starving infant with all the breast milk I don't have in my inflated boobs. Foobs. <sighs> the engorgement is ridiculous. Um, but I'm getting used to the fact that I just have to know it's my new normal to feel like I'm engorged, like, a lot. Um, I didn't sleep with a bra on last night, slept with my tight-fitting tank top on, which helped. I seemed to alternate between do I want the tightness or do I not want the tightness. Um, but the self-love has to get, and the self-compassion has to be in there. Um, I was being really feisty before, and I think part of that was hormonal with all the stuff with the Lupron and whatever, and um, the timing. And I'm hoping that eases up, because I feel like I'm not even on a cycle anymore. I'm pretty sure I'm in menopause, so um, there's no timing of like, oh, am I supposed to get my period? I have no idea. I'm so risque. I'm not even wearing a panty liner right now, <laughs> which I'm like, screw you, people. <laughs> whatever happens, happens. <laughs> I mean, I have a pad in my bag just in case, but, um, and I am wearing black, <laughs> but still, um, I like to think that I'm done. So I'm like, <laughs> let's be all rebellious and go out without a panty liner. Ooh, this is the excitement of being a, a menopausal woman is going out without a panty liner on because you just don't know what's going to happen. But it means that the Lupron is working because I'm not having those hemorrhagey bleedings anymore, which is awesome. Um... But that's the self-compassion. That's that's the little things that I can do and what can I control for all you fellow control freaks out there. Out there, You know, what can I control? What can I change? It's okay to be in a bad place for a short time. It's not okay to stay there. And I was there. And Pete Davidson was the one who like flipped the switch for me and reminded me that, you know, I can do this and I can do that. So what did I do? I did a puzzle and I'm almost done with it. Um, all the rest of the pieces look exactly the same. So it's, it's kind of like stuck there, but I'll figure it out because I know I'm super detail oriented and I'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> uh, what else can I do? I can go out with full on makeup. I will probably only see two human beings today. And it's not about other people. It's just like, I want to get up and I want to put cover up on and I want to put mascara on just so I feel better and I feel like my full me. Um, I pulled out my curling iron because like this is like what happens after like three days of not washing your hair where it's not really curly anymore, but it's well curly and it's like, do you keep it straight? Do you make it flat? Like, do you curl it up? So I went to have the curling iron and then I'm like, you know what? I am not in the curling iron moon today. So like, I don't care. So I left because I'm like, you know what? My makeup looks pretty good to today. Um, and what really turned it around for me today was I had a doctor appointment this morning um, with uh, the, I've mentioned before, I have fibromuscular dysplasia, a big word for something that is a big deal and is not a big deal at the same time. Um, just something to be aware of. And I've referenced before and I'll say it again, um, I have a, an episode on Neighbors to Know about fibromuscular dysplasia. I don't want to go into the logistics of what it is. You can, um, I wouldn't say look it up. I would say to watch the show because you can look up stuff on Google and find all sorts of misinformation. Um, but I do have it. And um, I had an ultrasound last week and all my arteries are in like, you know, decent condition, uh, decent condition. But my arteries in some part, parts of my body look like a string of pearls. It's like big, small, big, small, big, small. Um, I had that in a few of my arterial beds and I get ultrasounds done every year just to see how things are going. And um, I got cleared from one section of ultrasounds last year because nothing had changed. So like, why bother doing them? Um, although they did do a scan right before my surgery just to be on the safe side. And um, I had my other routine one that I have done every year. I had that done last week. So the appointment today was to say, okay, how are things going? And I walk into doctor's appointments, like not more figuratively since they're on Zoom. And I don't know what to expect. I don't know what horrible the news are going to tell me, like whatever. I just, you know, I'm like, whatever, just lay it on. But I did go back and look through like prior years of my scans to see, you know, has anything changed? And it looked like everything was pretty much the same. And it is the same. And, um, you know, I explained to her some things that were going on that I thought might have impacted my FMD. Um, but they did it. I'm still here. 
you know, like if I have abdominal cramping or something, because that's where most of my drama for FMD is. Um, it's not related to my FMD. It's related to the fact that I'm all these, on these freaking like hormone meds and I'm in menopause and that messes with abdominal stuff. Um, so yeah, so she cleared me from, um, from having those yearly ultrasounds, which is a really big deal because I've had them for four years now, I think. And when I first found out, I'm like, oh my God, I have FMD, I'm going to die. And then I've been to so many different, like, um, like they have an annual meeting every year. Well, that would make sense. It would every year if it's annual. Um, they have an annual meeting and I've, I've met so, so many other patients um, and, and have um, built a nice friendship with the woman who runs the FMD Society of America. Um, she's the one I interviewed for the Neighbors to Know episode. Her name is Pam Mace. So if you want to look it up. Um, so yeah, exciting news. I'm cleared. I am all good. And she said, like, you know, I don't really have anything to say. It's kind of a boring appointment. I'm like, you know what? I am thrilled to have a friggin' boring doctor's appointment with no information <laughs> to share because nothing's going on. I'm like, that's awesome. And that's why I'm vlogging too, because I'm like, that turned it around for me too. You know, things don't last forever. Four years ago, I was like, holy shit, what the hell's going on with my arteries? You know, wondering if I'm going to die. And people don't tend to die from FMD, by the way. They, they die from, like, strokes or aneurysms or something. And then, oh, by the way, find out they have FMD. Um, but it was just nice to, to know that, like, that was the light at the end of a four-year um, struggle. Not struggle. Just four-year, like, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> I do all these things to be super healthy and then you throw this at me. And by the way, I could have had FMD for the past, like, I don't know, since I was a teenager. I have no idea. There's no way to know. There's still a lot of research to do. Um, but it reminded me that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And yes, there's been shit after shit after shit for the past year and a half for me health-wise. And I am learning patience. And I am learning self-care to even do these vlogs because they help me so much and I'm so appreciative to all of you that reach out to me and tell me how much it's impacting you and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that I can be a support to other people um but yeah if you're in a down place like love yourself enough to be like okay I'm in a down place I'm gonna sit here and watch like two seasons of like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel which by the way is a freaking hysterical show and I don't even like period pieces um but it is hysterical you know, let yourself do that. You know, let yourself like have a hamburger and fries when you know, you're supposed to watch your salt. Like once in a while, it's okay. It's okay to be kind to your body. Just don't do it all the time and don't stay in a negative place. If you know something serious going on, of course, reach out to professionals or something, somebody else for help. Um, but have the self-love and self-compassion that if shit's going on right now, it doesn't define that that's what your entire life is going to look like. Who knew that this was going to happen? No idea. I know that there are bright things coming up for me. I know that. My gut just says that. My heart says that. I'm a very driven person. I know there will be like all these things that I wish for my life that I don't have right now. I know that those things are attainable. Right now, I just have to focus on my body and my health. That comes first and foremost. It really saddens me because I, I wasn't there to move my son into college because of my surgery. And I can't move him out of college because it's like the day after I go for my, I don't know, I'm there for like two and a half hours at the oncology place when I get the um, Zomata for the first time. I don't know how I'm going to react to that. They say expect two to three days of flu-like symptoms, fine. But I know it won't be like that forever. You know, I think of where I was like even a month ago with what I couldn't do with my arm. And like, I look what I'm doing now. Like I just picked up Starbucks for Pete's sake, um, which is a big deal because Starbucks was even open like <laughs> a bit ago. And, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm carrying my laptop bag. Granted, it's over my shoulder and, and I'm figuring out ways to modify life. Um, but it's not going to be like this forever. And the lessons that you're learning, of course, will stick with you. But what I'll leave you with, because I've got to get scooting over to work, what I'll leave you with is, you know, 
be compassionate with yourself. If you're in a dark place, it's okay to acknowledge that you're there. I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist, therapist, whatever. I'm just speaking from my own experience. If you're in a dark place, it's okay to acknowledge that you're there. It's okay to be on TikTok for two hours at like 2 a.m. <laughs> just don't do it all the time. Everything in moderation. You know, remember those things that you do that do fill you up. Instead of thinking of all the things that you can't do, think of all the things that you can do and just find one thing, one thing. I went to the gym and I went in the exercise bike and my heart rate went through the roof because I'm not used to doing that. And I had to stop. And my ego was like, you can only last five minutes on an exercise bike. And my body was like, you know what? She can only last five minutes on an exercise bike. And that's just what it is. So just don't stay there. You know, remember who you really are and what you want for your life and that those things can happen for you. You know, love yourself, take care of yourself. It's okay to cheat on food. It's okay to, you know, sleep more than you usually sleep. Your body obviously is calling for that, for that little time out. Fine, have your time out, but don't stay there. You know, turn things around, find what works for you. And it doesn't have to be perfect doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about stuff. People think I'm so optimistic <laughs> and cheery and, and light, light spirited. I'm like, they obviously were not in my apartment on Saturday when I was like in bed watching whatever the heck I was stupid shows I was watching. I'm like, I hate this show and I hate this show and I hate this show. And I just, uh, <laughs> but I didn't stay there. So yeah, just don't stay there. Have the self-compassion. Know that this happens to everyone. And um, love yourself enough to turn things around. Whether or not you're watching Pete Davidson TikToks or not. All right. Off to work I go with my Starbucks. Um, yeah. Have a great day. Do something kind to yourself today. Even if that means that you're on the couch. Cheese. Smile and happiness. Yay. Bye.